Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout with Alan Malventano, and we're here to talk about another SSD, but this time not a SATA SSD. Nope. PCI Express SSD. This is the G-Skill Phoenix Blade PCI Express drive. We've got a BI-8 PCI Express 2.0 connection. 2.0 BI-8. I guess, is that limiting us in any capacity in this particular drive? Not really, because really. other things that compete with that will might be uh, 3.0 by 4, which is basically the same speed. Okay. Yeah. So this is a 480 gig model. Uh, what is the target kind of user or demographic for a device like this? So this is supposed to be uh, the same kind of demographic that you would target a Revo Drive 350. Okay. Or a Revo 3X2. Sure. Right. Uh, so kind of like you want faster than SATA. You want a PCI Express SSD. You're still a consumer. You're not enterprise. You just want it to go faster. Right. So. There you go. All right, and for 480 gigs is plenty of capacity to, yep. can you install your OS to this? You can, uh, There, you have to use, like there's a driver you have to install. It's not Hit the F6 in. during Windows installation. Yeah, you have to do that, you have to have thing. your own driver, yeah. All right, and then, I mean, like I said, it's plenty of capacity for the OS. Mm -hmm. Do you install some games too, and basically run an entire system off of, except for maybe some long-term storage there, right? Yeah, I wouldn't use it for. Uh, what are long the storage. what are the basic specifications of the Phoenix Blade? So, it's pretty much. Like, what like, controller are we looking at? What okay. flash are we looking at? All right, so uh, it's a RAID, internally. Okay. Okay. So you have a set of four uh, Sandforce 2281 controllers, Toshiba flash. Right, because okay. it's that controller's kind of been pushing Toshiba lately, sure. you know. Um, and where OCC used to use their VCA 2.0 chip to kind of tie all that together, mm -hmm. it's their version of a not really a RAID chip, but it's more just like a, you know, it fans that bus out to those devices. It's not doing like a RAID five or anything. It's basically right. just striping across all of the drives, right? RAID zero, basically. Um, this uses a different. It's like a different name. It's um, SBC. So it's basically scale boost virtualization technology. It's huh. just a different name for doing the same thing that the VCA2 architecture did. Okay. Right. It's, uh, it's supposed to be able to pass smart data through the controllers back to the host. Trim, that's the big one, right? You want to be able to pass trim right. through that chip back to the host. That way you can, when we do our ometer testing, you actually see the, the ramp up. Sure. Right. If you didn't do that with that chip, it would just basically, basically be a flat line starting from Q depth of one straight across. And that so this shows good. up in Windows as just a single device? Yes. Right? Okay. All right. Yeah, just one device, 480 gig. Once you have the driver installed, that is. Right. Yep. Now, if you're adding this as a secondary drive, do you still have to have a driver for yeah. optimal performance or just to see it at all? No, just to see it at all. Okay. Yeah. There's a, um, there's a, their driver package has two different things. We get that little small set of like three files with the INF in it. That's just for, for like during the Windows install, right? right? And then they have a separate standalone. It's like, you know, a nice packaged installer that you just run if you were installing this as a, as a secondary, as a secondary, secondary drive. Secondary unit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to do the second one after you already did the first one. Like once you have the, the driver installed, that's it. You're done. You don't have to, you don't get any added benefit by installing that larger package. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so where are we at in terms of performance then? How did it actually perform once we had it all up and running? Okay, so when it comes to sequentials, just like writing to the drive, reading from the drive, yeah. uh, it's basically a Revo uh, 350. It's very, very close, right? So your write speeds or read speeds, write speeds, you're looking at like 1.8 gigabytes per second. Okay, so that's fast, 1.8 gigabytes per it, second. Reads and writes? It, it is fast. Uh, the writes were doing... Pretty close to that. Yeah. Um, all right, so here's kind of the hiccup, though. Okay. Still using Sandforce. Right. Right. So when it comes to anything that has to do with random I.O., right, just random 4K, random any kind of workloads, uh, you're waiting on Sandforce, which is a very latent controller when it comes to, like, it gets an I.O., it has to wait a certain amount of time before it's able to give you that data, right? Huh. Okay. Uh, so much so that all of the other SSDs that have come out I mean, right, past couple of generations, Silicon Motion, the like an 850 Evo, really runs circles around Sandforce at this point. Okay. On that latency thing. Does that issue become more important when you're running multiple controllers like this, or is it lessened because you're running multiple controllers like this? Uh, it's about the same. It's just that oh. you know, if you if you only issued one I/O to this drive, it would issue one I/O to one of those four Sandforce controllers. Still okay. takes kind of the same effect, same right? Okay. Same amount of time. Uh, the fact that there's four of them gives you more benefit if you were to throw 
you know, hundreds of IOs at the same time. If you're doing a high time, Q depth. Really high Q then, depth. Then, you know, it's distributing that. So maybe in theory, and at yeah. the best, you'd quarter that time. Yeah, basically, the, yeah. the, the, the ramp up that you would get can ultimately get to a higher level, but sure. it doesn't happen until way further over at a much higher Q depth. Okay. Right? Um, so for a person that's just going to be using this day to day, uh, if you were using it in a random IO workload, any kind of randomness at all, um, this unit doesn't surpass the newer like single SSDs, not even a rate of them, but just a single like 850. Talking Pro. about SATA SSDs. SATA SSDs. Okay. Right. Uh, it doesn't really pass it until you get past a Q depth of eight. Okay. How common would you say something like that is for a normal user? That's the thing. Normal users spend most of their time below okay. eight. Right. So eight or below typically, unless okay. you're really, I mean. You would would you, really would you also say that most consumers are, should be more concerned about sequential versus random, or which way? That all depends on the consumer and like what specifically mm. they are running, right? Okay. So if you're doing bulk copies back and forth to the drive, this is going to walk all over anything SATA. Right. It just yeah. straight line speed. It just it dominates. Yeah. Right. Simple as that. But when it comes to random I/O, things like booting Windows, that's incredibly random. Right. Okay. Um, you know, just there's just all these different, uh, you know, some. What games. about something like game loading? Right, That's the game thing. loading. It seems to me like it might be. It should be a sequential thing, but it, I could see out in other cases it, why it would it not. It should be. Uh, but here's a, here's a perfect example. Um, this drive might have a harder time writing, like when you're doing your really fast Steam game downloads. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's doing a much more random workload, even though you would think it's just one download. But right. it's actually Steam doing, is kind of distributing data. It's a distributed in a network. Random fashion, so yeah. to the SSD, that looks much more like a random workload. This might actually end up having a harder time with that than, mm. a, than a good single SATA SSD. And that's right? a result of the latency of that Sandforce controller? Just the latency per I.O. Yeah. Okay. It ends up adding up when you have you know, dozens, thousands of IOs all happening at the same time, different right. spots of the drive, right? Right. Um, as far as game loading, it really comes down to how the levels are packaged. Sure. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, that's... You know, yeah. if it's... if it's a, But if it's a game where if you had it installed on a hard drive, you could hear the hard drive thrashing around while the game level was loading, right. then that's more of a random workload. Hmm. Right? Okay. That kind of thing. That's okay. how you could tell by your ear if you have a hard drive. So there are cases where a SATA SSD is going to be faster than this. Than this. This for particular For some random workloads. Yeah. What Sequential, I really, this will still be significantly faster than what yes. SATA 6 gigabit per second could handle. Right. As a matter of fact, this is pushing more than you could even get out of 4, four or even 6 SSDs in RAID behind an Intel RAID controller. Oh, really? Because yeah, you're, yeah. you're, um, you're actually bottlenecked elsewhere in the pipeline, uh, okay. right, from that controller. You can yeah. only really get 1.8 gig per second out of that, regardless of how many SATA devices you have hooked up. So, yeah, if you really want the fast straight line speed and you just want, say you want a really clean build, right, you just want to have a PCI Express card next to your video card. Right. That's it, right? You don't even have to worry about SATA cables, where you're going to put those drives. Yeah, that's true. Depends that's true. on, you know, depends on what the person wants, really. What about pricing? Do we have any pricing information on this uh, yet? We're going to put that in their view. We just don't have that. Uh, this, this is we're we're looking at this pretty early on, so yeah. uh, I don't think it's actually for sale or anything yet that we've actually seen it. No, I don't. And don't have I don't any really indication is. from G Skill on it. Um, I, you know, I physically I like the design of it. I think it looks neat. Yeah, it's it's well designed, well packaged. Part where the lights on the back just activity. Yeah, it's activity. It's like status. It's on there. and activity. Okay. Yeah. Um, I will say, like the use of heat sinks and and the way that they used it is well thought out, right? They're putting heat sinks where they need to put them. In other words, Sandforce chips kind of draw a little bit of power. Yeah, but there's you know? no heat sinks necessarily we're just on the flash chips. No, the flash example, is okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, the, you know, they put them where it mattered, and even if they're on the opposite side of a board, like, then the flash, it's still going to, the heat's still going to conduct through the board and make it So what would you do to improve a product like this if G-Skill wanted to kind of revamp it? Would it just be use a different SATA controller at this point? And yeah, I would. I would love. Would I would. I would love to see uh, either VCA two or the scale boost in this iteration. Either one of those chips, mm -hmm. since they're capable of very high IOs, I'd love to see them connected with very low latency SATA controllers. Yeah. What we've seen those connected to up to this point is a Sandforce controller. That's what OCZ was using as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So you know. Yeah. That I mean, would be pretty cool. You know, that yeah. would actually be pretty cool. Uh, also, a little side note, this is not NVMe, in case anybody was wondering. It's mm. using just the SCSI protocol. Um, so you're not going to get the latency benefits of NVMe. There may be no point in hooking up a Sandforce 
It's controlled probably, with that but you're just an NVMe you're just adding means, more. So. You know, per I/O, you get more yeah. CPU overhead compared to the newer method. Huh. That sort of deal. Yeah, okay. we actually put uh, in anticipation of some potential consumer PCIe Intel SSD that might show up. We don't know. Um, I included results from the P3700. Ah, okay. And with this, just people can get some kind of point of reference. Right. And when you look at iometer, it just it just laughs at it. It's just right. like Q depth of one even. It just hmm. Hmm. especially Q depth of one. You know, if if this comes out priced aggressively, yeah. uh dollar fifty a gig, would that be aggressive? Would it need to be closer to a dollar a gig, do you think, to really be like an interesting part for a uh, high end enthusiast? A dollar fifty was supposedly Intel's target price for the P thirty five hundred. Which we still haven't seen. Which we still haven't seen. Right. But if that carries over to the, you would figure, yeah. even if the consumer thing was like the same as that, that's mm -hmm. still $1. fifty right there. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, that, if that's so your in target. Order, in order for this to maintain relevance, it would have to be under that. Yeah. Whatever, whatever that P3500 or whatever consumer SSD would come out at, this needs to be below that. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be too fair, this is available and you could be able to buy it soon. That's true. We have no idea about any of those other products. Yep. So, uh, you know, it's an interesting product. Obviously, it has some flaws with the... With the just uh, the, the Sandforce thing, issue. really. It's just, it's, that's a very dated controller by now. 2281, right? Yeah. That's been around for... A long time. Like three years like almost? Vertex... What three yeah. or something? Hmm. It's been around. Interesting to see. We'll have uh, all the testing and uh, pricing information as well mm -hmm. in the full review over at PCPer.com, which will have the link in the description here if you happen to be watching this on YouTube. But for now, this is the G Skill Phoenix Blade 480 gig PCI Express SSD. Thanks, guys. Thanks.